Riverfront Stadium was the dual-purpose home of the Cincinnati Reds and Bengals for many years. Located on the banks of the Ohio River, it would serve Cincy well for some of the best days of its hometown teams. This is Riverfront Stadium, Rise and Fall. Riverfront Stadium was conceived in the late 1960s with the rise of the cookie cutter stadiums. At this point in time, stadiums such as Bush Stadium in St. Louis, RFK Stadium in Washington DC, and the Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta had been built and been proving the concept. It just made economic sense to have two sports playing in the same stadium, especially with the advent of movable seats making it more seamless. Riverfront would serve as replacement for the jewel box Crosley Field, which was approaching 60 years old. Riverfront would also be built to be the permanent home of the newly established Cincinnati Bengals, who had been playing at the University of Cincinnati's Nippert Stadium. The stadium would see success for its baseball team quickly, with the Cincinnati Reds hosting part of the 1970 World Series there in its first year. Multiple powerhouse Reds teams would play there, in an era which the Reds would become known as the Big Red Machine. These teams, led by players such as Pete Rose, Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, Ken Griffey, and others, would see multiple World Series appearances, including when the Reds would win back-to-back -back World Series in 1975 and 1976. After this era, the team would go on to win another World Series in 1990. Cincinnati's NFL team would see success as well at Riverfront, with two AFC Championship winning teams in the 1980s. While the stadium was adequate and comparable to many others in the early 90s, times were changing by the mid-90s, and with the moves of the LA Raiders to Oakland, the LA Rams to St. Louis, and the Cleveland Browns to Baltimore, along with the then-pending move of the Houston Oilers to Tennessee, Cincinnati Bengals owner Mike Brown had leverage for a new stadium, and thus would threaten to move the team if one wasn't built. Voters in Hamilton County would oblige, and a half percent sales tax increase was approved, for not just a new home for the Bengals, but for the Reds as well. The deal for what would become Paul Brown Stadium would become one of the most lopsided and owner-friendly deals in NFL history, with Paul Brown Stadium being 94% taxpayer-funded. The Bengals would be the first to leave Riverfront, with the new stadium being completed in 2000. What would become Great American Ballpark would slowly take shape right next to Riverfront Stadium, which at this point was now known as Synergy Field. While Great American Ballpark was being built, an unusual construction configuration would take place, with Synergy Field being partially torn down during construction to allow room. The 2002 season would be the Reds' final year there, and it would be swiftly demolished only a few months after the season ended in December of that year, being one of many cookie-cutter stadiums being demolished in this era. Today the building is but a memory. Thank you for watching.